Okay, this is the fourth item in the Gumtree haul. He did say he had an old monitor and he gave me some weird measurement for it. So I thought it was about a 17 inch, but it turns out it's a 19 inch. This Olympic brand. I've never really heard of before, but there were a lot of generic monitors back in those days. I forget what it says on the back, some other brand I think. Or name, Supreme Monitor. 19 inch colour monitor, made in October 2000. But these were dime a dozen when it came to a brand, often they're the same thing inside. Maybe five different manufacturers or something, but with all sorts of different brands on them. And I have not looked inside one of these since, yeah, I guess probably 2005, 6, somewhere like that. I used to fix hundreds of these things. Not so much the 19s, but everything from the 14s upwards in VGAs. Uh, very common sort of thing, and I could sell as many secondhand VGA monitors as I could get my hands on. So I used to get them from around anywhere pretty much, but some, a lot of them end up as in the scrap metal yard. Uh, not working, some working, anything I get my hands on. I was lucky enough to get the, they did a computers for school program thing. And I was almost going to go to Melbourne and get some VGA monitors. I just couldn't get enough of them. And yeah, this computer for school thing, luckily I knew a guy who used to work for a computer store I did repairs for. And he rang me up one day and says, oh, do you want a massive pile of monitors? And um, they're all going in the dumpster because they're all faulty and they, they don't want them, they, they just put together all the systems they could get going so I think I got two panel van fulls of monitors off him and that was basically the last of them really before LCD started taking over so I was lucky then, I got a lot of those ones going but yeah, I was one of the only people that really bothered repairing them a lot of TV repairs and stuff didn't seem to want to do computer monitors so I was doing them for people from up the northwest coast of Tasmania and everywhere so um, yeah, did a lot of these things this one actually I gave it a quick run on my laptop, I'll try it on this old, I found this computer, I forgot I even had it, I think a friend gave me this, so I'm not sure if it was any good this computer, but hopefully it'll do something, but it does seem a bit dim this monitor for my liking, normally I'd turn it up a bit brighter, ooh that doesn't look too good, Have we got a, oh yeah, what did that say, 640 by 480, gee that's a bit, bit low res, it was working right on the other one, but that looks like the computer's doing something weird, so I might have to find a better better computer, I think. I forgot this thing even existed, it's been sitting there so long, I didn't even notice it anymore. What does that button do? Reset or something? So I was almost... The input signals are both missing here, yeah, well that's... What did that button do? Oh well, I think that computer might need to go in the e-waste, but I think a friend gave it to me, I was going to set it up for the local hall to use, and it never happened. But it's not sounding too healthy anyway, I don't know how long that's been lying around, quite a few years now, so I'll have to find something else. Now I've got to wait five minutes for Windows to start up. Especially on this old thing. It seems to give a nice sharp image at least, no, it's not blurry around the edges or anything. I plugged it in straight away when I got it home because I thought well, if it's worn out I'm going to pull the chassis out of it and throw the rest in e-waste. But it actually looks like it's probably usable. Never know, it might have been the settings on my laptop were not, it wasn't happy with, but we'll see what it's like on this computer. It just seemed a bit dark and I wouldn't mind to look inside one again and to see about going over the dry joints on the neck board yeah brightness at 100 percent so to me that's probably a little dimmer than it should be let's see what the it's not too bad i think contrast is at 100 as well yeah Yeah, to be fair, it's not actually too bad. It's really interesting seeing it on a CRT monitor again. I'm so used to looking at LCD now. It's actually quite nice to see kind of a completely different look, really. It's actually nicer in some ways on the eyes. 
you don't know that sort of washed out backlit thing yeah that's not looking too bad I think we'll have a look inside this thing it's actually got a little bit of a spot that's not suppressing that 100% comes apart. Okay, so if we can get this back off, looks like we the power cord of course. So we've got a screw near the VGA here. What on earth is that thing? Looks like it's actually some sort of USB thing hidden under that. Possibly. So this one's just got screws, we won't have to undo the top. A lot of them have clips at the top and usually you can just undo the bottom two screws, lever it up a bit and then just give them a thump on the top and they come undone most of the time. Once you get a bit of a pivot in the back. There was a bit of an art to thumping them the right way. But when you've done enough of them, it was second nature. Where's the... The other thing we've got to be careful of because this stand will be no doubt attached to the, the case. I might have to put something soft down for this. Yeah, I'm going to shut up that face down. So yeah, this one looks to be in good condition. I don't think it's had an awful lot of use by the look of it. No sign of discoloration on the board. Probably a pretty standard setup, but they all work. What have we got here? A big Toshiba tube. No wonder it's lasted well, so it's got a decent tube in it. Made in Japan. Yeah, I would have thought one of these later monitors, especially with a brand like this on it, would be some cheapo thing, but I'm not sure that the cheapo makers ever really caught up with making monitor screens this was sort of the end of companies like Toshiba when they could still cling on a bit and had a bit of an advantage over other manufacturers and not long after this once everything went plasma and LCD and stuff they really didn't have that advantage anymore I think and their profit margins on these sort of things went down the toilet basically along with their CRT plants shutting down bit of dust in a so normally with these things I would unsolder this shield and go over it, but this one actually doesn't look too bad, doesn't look like anything's been overly hot. It's got a nice big heat sink on it which helps. A lot of them just had three transistors hanging in the breeze or with a small heat sink. And that was a common cause of problem in these things for colours dropping out. This one may just need a bit of a tweak of the, I might just tweak the screen up slightly. I'm not sure if this would have a service menu or something to get into other settings like a sub brightness or something. Doesn't seem to have any pots in it at all. But yeah, the soldering and everything in it looks good. The caps look pretty good in it. No obvious signs of heat and stuff. So no idea what the hours are, it's certainly got a bit of dust in it, so it's done a bit of work. That's a nice big horizontal output transistor we got there, but being a 19 inch you'd expect that. See if we can get a slight bit more brightness out of it without bringing out any retrace. Because to me it feels a little bit on the dim side. It's probably passable, but... Just habit I always used to give them a little bit of range so as they aged people could still get a decent picture out of them. How's that gonna go? Yeah, we've got a green light. Yeah, 
and of course Norton want your money. Now can I carefully Oops, that's the focus. Well, ah, oh, it's a it's a double focus control. Should have known in one of these big ones. The bottom one is lower than I thought. And there we have a lot more. So that's more. We should really have a bit of brightness around the edges there. But you want to make sure you don't have any retrace lines. Showing up on that, which I don't think we do have. Interesting to see how much more we can get out of it. Where's it gone? Still no sign of retrace there. So I think it was definitely a bit down in its. Might even have too much brightness now because. That's at least nice and bright. You're getting the raster showing up so you can see black underneath and a bit of raster showing. But we want to be able to actually turn that down enough. It's probably on the verge of almost having a little bit too much. Because you can't turn it right down but there is the contrast control of course if you want to reduce the brightness a bit. Even though it reduces the contrast obviously. Probably go down a little bit off that. Let's try that, see how bright it goes when it's bright, bright. I'm just getting the rest to show on. Just lit up. Basically the blacks should light up ever so slightly, that's how I always set it anyway. I say it gives you a bit of room to play. Just tweak it down and check again, make sure there's no retrace showing that I can see. Turn that light off for help. That's minimum brightness. Certainly if you're using this in daylight you'd want it cranked up a bit. White should be nice and white, that's probably more than you'd normally use, but that's still acceptable to use like that. Night time like this you'd probably want to be a bit dimmer. Yeah, I think that's you could actually go back up a little bit probably, but I'm happy with that. But yeah, it's nice and sharp to the edges. Probably just ever yeah, so slightly out there. But that's well and truly usable, no convergence issues. Yeah, I think I'm quite happy with that. And then we've got all our different H size, phase, I think the phase is off a bit there, isn't it? Uh, actually needs a bit more width maybe. Here is every computer card and stuff. What are we on? 1024768, yeah, that's a bit better. That other computer, I don't know what that was doing at 480. Vertical size, I think we're pretty. Okay, a bit of room there, didn't we? Vertical phase. It's pretty close. I don't think the pincushion needs anything. Trapezoid. Parallelogram. And of course you can rotate the whole picture. 
top corner stretch, bottom corner stretch, P balance. Not even sure what that stands for. It looks like a kind of getting the centre right. Got one of all these other ones. Oh, one's for PVR purity. Well, you can actually adjust it. I would have thought the degaussing does a purity on a horizontal Moira pattern because a lot of these monitors did get some weird Moira patterns in them. I forgot some of them you could actually adjust. Vertical Moira. Often I think it was just to do with the aging of the tube or something like that. Vertical linearity, vertical linearity balance. Maybe to get the top and bottom the same. Recall. What does that do? Maybe go back to different ones. I don't think I'll try it. Exit. Oh yes, yeah, so maybe. I don't know if that's to do with the recall, the original colour balance settings. So looks like I can tweak each colour individually. So you've got the highlights and lowlights. Oops, where do we go? That more looks like contrast and brightness, but it's probably the same sort of thing as low lights and highlights. And we can go back to the normal factory settings, 9365 under with the standard. But yeah, I think that's pretty good, that monitor. I guess we should give it a bit of a tap test on the tube. But yeah, this one doesn't look like it's been overly hot. Many of these things did long hours in businesses and stuff, so they or even just with home use. So you can see a lot of dry joints and stuff in them, but this one looks fine. So I think that's a perfectly good monitor there. Interesting look inside one again, just for the hell of it, but yeah, nothing real interesting inside this one. You forget how sort of generic they got. No interesting faults to fix in it. But mainly they were sort of vertical faults, horizontal faults, and a lot of RGB either. People, of course, would bend, knock these pins, bend them, and then force it into the socket and completely destroy the pins in them. So I replaced a lot of plugs on the end of the cords. One of the most common jobs. And then, yeah, you'd have your missing colours, red, green, or blue missing, or intermittently dropping out. That was just dry joints usually. Sometimes it was a faulty transistor on the neck board. So there's that sort of area, RGB faults. And then, yeah, usually sort of power supply slash horizontal type faults where the thing would, wouldn't power up. Sometimes it was something in the power section. Sometimes it was the horizontal section shutting it down. And then I think the vertical sections were generally pretty reliable in computer monitors, but you would get the old vertical collapse fault. And like it just got to the point, there's so many of them, they're just, you're doing one after the other, you sort of forget what even went wrong with them, but a lot of it just generic faults. And there were a few models with various quirks and bits and pieces. Some of the old Osborne monitors made by Philips where you'd find certain inductors, the hor I think the horizontal output transistor would fail and there was one inductor near those that used to burn up, just a two pin inductor, but then that would cause other inductors in there to cook a bit and just slightly change value and you couldn't get the power supply to fire up. And I worked out all the different quirks of those ones. I think they were a 15 inch monitor, they were really common. They sold, must have sold hundreds of them locally, if not thousands. And there were a few ones with weird like, some of them had like the little chips in the power supplies. The Korean made chips would, instead of just not running at all, they do all these weird things like the power supply would buzz or it'd have some weird intermittent problems and those, uh, I forget what the chips were, UC3948, something like that. Quite a common little power supply, 8 pin chip. And yeah, various usual blown FETs, blown power supply chips, capacitor failures, that sort of thing. Often that would cause the chips to fail, but most of them were pretty, the circuits in these were pretty generic. In the end, most of them were built very similar to each other, and very run-of-the-mill to repair. It was pretty boring in the end, just doing the same old thing. I don't think really got much else fail in them. Like I so said, there was that diode that would cause the narrow lack of width and pincushion fault. 
sometimes you would I think some did have a damper type diode in there that would short out and shut the whole horizontal down strangely it was very rare any of these had faulty line output transformers in them that was the one thing that you know sort of usually the tubes were stuffed or something by the, before the line output went in most of these monitors that was sort of one of the major issues with the ones you couldn't fix was just the tube was just so poor blurred around the edges that sort of thing and of course with the computer monitor you can't really afford to have the tube out at all and the big assholes also with them is you couldn't really swap the tubes in them I think I've tried it a couple of times and you just can't get the yoke set up easily and all the convergence and stuff good enough for a computer monitor unlike TVs where you can swap tubes left right and centre if they got the same pin out and same mechanical mount which most did some of these had different mounting positions for the screws so yeah, eventually the LCDs took over from these, took up much less space, had a better, much better picture as far as geometry and stuff, no hassles, no blurry edges as they got older or any of that, so there was a lot of reasons to get an LCD, but mainly the space and weight savings were great. I certainly got rid of, I had a couple of big Diamond Pro type Trinitron copied tubes from Mitsubishi, a couple of big, I think they were a compact and a digital or something like that branded monitors 20 inches or something massive things and I think in the end they basically weren't worth much so I kept a couple for myself and yeah eventually I went and bought it like a 17 inch LCD I think I got rid of it. I had a couple of computers running for some reason got rid of the other old computer and I actually threw those things out which would probably be worth quite a bit of money now but they were still running absolutely fine but they're basically couldn't give them away by that stage but they were a beautiful picture those big sony type tubes only problem with the sony ones in the bigger monitors is they had to have a couple of um, horizontal wires in them to hold the the um, slot mask together stop it vibrating and stuff and you could just make them out on the picture slightly dimmer lines across the screen but other than that absolutely beautiful monitors to look at and work on but they just got to the point, yeah, you couldn't give these things away. And now, amazingly, they've gotten so old again that they're actually worth something again to people. So I don't think I have much of a use for this thing, but it's actually been nice to see what the image looks like on one again compared to LCD. And it actually looks pretty good, even though the LCDs are pretty damn good these days. It's just a different kind of picture on these things. But... I don't think anyone really wants to have these great big things everywhere again unless you're doing up retro computers what does it say on the bottom here it says molder lion guards lion guards design t1081 something pacific ul number no date on it must have been whoever made the the plastic for this thing Oh, actually, we've got a lot of stuff in the back of it, too. Warning, this product includes critical mechanical and electrical parts, which are essential for X-ray radiation safety. For contented safety. <laughs> critical components indicated in this service manual. For contented safety, replace critical components indicated in the service manual only with exact replacement parts given the parts list. Given in the past list, operating high voltage for the product is 26 kilovolts at minimum brightness. Refer to service manual for measurements, procedures, and service adjustment. And then we've probably got a data manufacturer. Oh, oh. Uh, what's it pointing to on the month? Uh, tenth month, third day, I'd say. Oh, no, it's only got one, two, three, and zero. So what's that? Oh, that would be 0, 1, 2, and 30 as far as days. And then it's got the other one, the numbers. It was a third. So it was a third. Oh, that can't be right. It can't be 33rd. There's no 33rd in any month. So maybe I'm wrong about that. Or is that the month? 10th month of the year 00. zero. You would assume 3 is for 30. Maybe someone stuffed it up. But it'd have to be 31 or 30. So anyway, that's just some 
some stuff down in the bottom of the cabinet there. Probably can't really see it next to that USB hole or whatever it is. I was going to check that too. What is that little port there for? If it is a little port. Yeah, it's a USB port. Oh, it's only got four connectors on it. Looks like the sort of one you get on your printer or something. There's only four pins on it. So maybe it's some sort of service thing or for upgrading the firmware or something. a massive clean. I assume that pulls off like most of them did. I should put a plastic on the front of this. Oh yeah, this one's got a bit you push in. One of the monitor and off she comes. And that is filthy. So I'm going to add a bit of a clean up. Yeah, that's all looking good. So thanks for watching.